You're listening to a message from Maranatha Church of Jacksonville. For more information, please visit our website, maranathajacks.com. Hello, Maranatha. This is Pastor Kevin, and we are going to look at the book of First John. We have been going through the Gospel of John all year long, one chapter a week. And we also want to look at the letters of First John, Second John, and Third John in the New Testament that was also written by the same John that the Gospel of John was written by. And so we're going to look at First John, and we're going to look at chapter by chapter in these podcasts to fill in and to kind of talk about the ideas that John was writing about at the time. And so First John, like I said, uh, we believe is written by the same person, John the Apostle, that we have been studying in the Gospel of John. And this was one of the disciples, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. And he was very close to Jesus. He even calls himself the, the one that Jesus loves, the, the beloved one. And so in First John, we believe that this is a letter that he wrote to the churches at the time, probably around 85 to 90 AD. And it's more like a poetic sermon when you read it. You read it, and it's not necessarily like a letter that you would see in the New Testament like uh, by Paul, where it has a definite greeting and a conclusion and, and who it's to. Uh, but this is a general letter to the churches probably in the, in the Asia Minor area at the time, which is modern-day Turkey. And it was written to them to address a couple of things, to address some false teachers that were going through those churches. And John was writing to say, hey, there's a there's some people coming through these churches that uh, you should not listen to. And so when John wrote this letter, uh, I think I already said it, 85 to 90, maybe I didn't, 85 to 90 AD was when he probably wrote this letter. And at that time, John would have been very, very old. And we believe that John was the, the last disciple alive. And so he had this reputation as the last disciple who was following Jesus and knew Jesus and has seen Jesus, which he talks about here in First John chapter 1, which we'll go through. Right now we're a little introduction, and then we'll go through the first chapter. And so this John is very old at the time, and so he wasn't able to really travel to these churches as he would have done or ha- as he has previously probably traveled to these churches. But now he's writing these letters to these churches and giving them uh, prophetic warning about false teachers and also just giving them encouragement and reminders of of who Jesus is and reminders of his teachings. And so he was addressing these false Bible teachers that would come through there and um, these some of these members of the church that he was addressing uh, even left the church and they were denying that Jesus was the Messiah. So he's addressing some of that as well. <clears throat> and so John was a little more about John. His, as I said, he's the disciple whom Jesus loved, which he says that in his gospel, John 21, he mentions that, that this is from the disciple whom Jesus loved. And then he's also the brother of James, which they are represented as the sons of thunder. And so in 1 John, his letters, we see a lot of similar expressions found in 1 John as well as the book of John, the gospel of John. For example, he mentions eternal life and no other gospels mention that phrase nowhere else in the Bible. Or he says a new commandment or another phrase that that we will read about in John 15 is uh, remain in Christ. Also, another phrase that you hear in the in the first John letter is walking in darkness. Also, a phrase that you hear in both is that your joy may be full. And so John writes in a way where he kind of gives two, a twofold message in the first John letter, where part of it, his main focus, this word comes up a lot, is light. And we'll see that a lot in, in first John chapter one, two, and half of three. And then there's another kind of main focus after that, which is the word love. We'll see that a lot in first John, half of first John three and four and throughout five. And so you see this message of light, that Jesus is the light. And then you see this message of love, where he mentions that God is love, like in 1 John 4. And so those are kind of how it's how it's really split in half, this, this letter, where you see a lot of these similar themes of light, 
and of love. And then kind of in the middle of this letter, you see him really getting at these uh, false teachers or these antichrists that he he calls them. So <clears throat> with that being said, a little introduction there, I want to just dive into 1 John chapter 1 now and talk about this. And this is the shortest chapter, how it's split up, is this is the shortest chapter. Now, uh, obviously, when this was first written, it wasn't written with chapter numbers and verses. It was just written as one long uh, sermon, which actually probably wasn't very long. If you read it all the way through, it probably will only take you 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So it's actually a pretty short sermon. <laughs> and so if you read uh, 1 John 1, you would see that it's only, in here, it's only 10 verses long. And so I want to read part of it here. I want to read 1 John 1, uh, starting in verse 1. And this is this is the Apostle John saying this. He says, We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen, We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are, we are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. So you see here at the very start of this letter, this sermon, whatever you want to call it, that John is expressing this invitation to these readers, or really the listeners at the time. They would have been gathered together listening to this this letter that was that was given to them. It would have been read out loud in a uh, congregation of people, of believers. And so they would hear these words of John saying, we, we've seen him. I've, I've touched Jesus. I, I know him. I've heard his voice. And so we see that this letter is a firsthand account of a disciple who is with Jesus. And so I think that's fascinating right there that we have this letter today That was written by somebody who actually did touch Jesus and hear his voice. And so I think that's what makes this letter so special. And that all the letters in the New Testament that we read about, that they they saw Jesus, they were with him, they heard his voice. And so John is saying, I know I've seen him, I've heard his voice, and I want you to take my words seriously. And the people that were listening would have taken his words very seriously because they would have known who this John was. He was the beloved one. He was the one leaning on Jesus at the Last Supper. He was the one that was so close with him in, in the inner circle. And he was the one that was with his, his mother at the cross. This is the same John. And so people would have known who this was. And they they have probably seen John. They've probably heard John. And so hearing John say this to them, it would have caught their attention. Okay, we better listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. He was personally with Jesus for for those all those years. And so he, he says that I'm writing this, verse four, I'm writing this. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. And so it's an invitation for them as well as us that when we read it, we can receive joy that, man, this person was with Jesus. He knows him. And now we have this account that we can read. And it, as we read it, it light, it brightens us up. We're, we're full of joy because we know that Jesus is, is real. He's alive. And people saw him when he was here on earth. They saw his actual physical body, that Jesus is a man. He came in the flesh. And he is God. And so John starts with this introduction, and I, and I love this introduction um, because of that, just that uh, intimacy that John is sharing with, with the, the listeners and inviting us into this, this uh, life of joy with him. So then John um, gets to this first message, the uh, message of light. And so in verse five, he says, this is the message We heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. And so you see that phrase, verse five, this is the message. And then later on 
in first John three 11, you see that same phrase again, this is the message you should love one another. And so that's what I mean by how it's split in half where this, this first section kind of focuses on this idea of light, Jesus being the light, driving away darkness. And then later on, we get to that message of love. And so he says, this is the message we heard from Jesus, that God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. If you remember in the gospel of John, Jesus declares that he is the light. He says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. And so this is the message that John heard at the time. And he's sharing with these readers now and these listeners here. God is light. There's no darkness in him. Verse 6. So we're lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all of our sin. So he's inviting us into this relationship with light. But if we have darkness, we can't be in relationship with light. That darkness has to be gone. And so how does that happen? Well, Jesus is inviting us into that relationship with the light. But he's saying we have to uh, first uh, confess our sins. We have to acknowledge that we are uh, sinful, that we have sin, and that we confess that to Jesus. And he's done something with that sin. He's nailed it to the cross. And so if we want to have fellowship with the light, if we want to have fellowship with him, then we must acknowledge that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sin. And so there's that invitation for the listener. How can you be in fellowship with God if you have darkness? If you're walking in darkness, then you don't have fellowship with God. And that's a very uh, convicting word as well. Um, as If we're, we're listening to that, if we're reading that, and we have sin in our heart, and we're like, wow, maybe I don't, you know, I, I haven't been walking with the Lord. I need to acknowledge my sin and give that to him. And so then in verse 8, he says, if we claim we have no sin— We are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. And so we need this continual uh, forgiveness uh, from Jesus. Confession, I believe, is a very healthy practice. It's not something that we just do once and we're good to go. Uh, there's things that we we kind of pick up on and there's things that we continue to uh, kind of struggle with. And we need to acknowledge that and continue to, to give that to the Lord over and over again. And I don't want us to walk around on uh, eggshells feeling like, oh my gosh, am I going to mess up? Am I going to mess up? I don't, I don't feel like that's how we should live. But I I believe that if you're listening to this and you're reading this letter, um, I think you know what type of of darkness that maybe you've experienced or you have in your heart or something that you haven't fully given to the Lord that you you might need to do. And so he's saying, if we confess confess our sins, Jesus is faithful. He's faithful to doing something with that and forgiving us. He's he's kind. The Bible says that his kindness leads us to repentance. And so Jesus is kind. He's not ready and waiting to just strike us down with that darkness. He's inviting us into light and he's inviting us in such a intimate way and kind way that we don't have to be ashamed and shame, full of shame. Uh, He's inviting us into this, this, this light with him. And all we have to do is confess. Yes, Lord, I'm, 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 I have sin. Thank you, Lord, for, removing that from me. Thank you, Lord, for clearing my heart, my mind. So then, uh, I don't want to jump ahead, but that's the end of 1 John 1. Uh, Then he'll address some more things here after this. But this first chapter just really, uh, you know, invites us into this relationship, invites us into this fellowship. And John is saying this fellowship is a joyful one. This is the reason he's writing and the reason uh, he wants us to hear this message is so that we do have joy. But if we have darkness and we're 
lying or walking around lying as if we don't have darkness, then we're not going to have joy. We're going to feel divided in our, in our way that we're living. And so why not just give all you have to the Lord, give it all. If there's anything you're holding back, any thing that you're holding on to that's not of him for whatever reason, if it's unforgiveness or bitterness, rage, whatever it may be, just ask the Lord to uh, search your heart, to examine your heart, examine your mind. And uh, he'll, he'll, he'll see what it is. He knows what it is and he'll reveal that to you. And then you just confess to him and it can be such an intimate exchange that we have with Jesus. So that is the introduction to first John, this poetic sermon by the apostle John written in 85, 90 AD. And also first John chapter one there about fellowshipping with Christ, having fellowship with him. I think that's a beautiful thing to have fellowship with Christ and we've been invited into it. Uh, but we have to first acknowledge our sin and acknowledge and confess it in order to have this fellowship with Christ that's full of joy. So let me pray and then we will continue this journey in the book of First John. And I'll talk about First John chapter 2 next week. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this letter that we have <clears throat> that was was 2,000 years old, and we have this letter that we can read and feel close to you, Jesus, that we're reading the very words of a disciple who is so close to you. And so we thank you for this. We thank you for this gift that you've given us, that we have this, that we can read it and understand it and listen to it, and we can receive fellowship with you, and we can have understanding of how to have fellowship with you, that we can confess our sins to you and be free of those things and be free of darkness in our hearts and our minds. And so I thank you, Jesus, that you're light and that you fill us with your light. And so do that right now. Fill us with your light. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name.